Joining us is Senator Angus King of Maine. He's the independent senator who serves on both the Intelligence and Armed Services Committees. Uh, thanks very much, Senator King, for, for joining us. Uh, what, have you heard anything? Do you know if they at least wounded this guy? Is he alive? Is he dead? I've checked what intelligence sources I have, and I, I hate to tell you, no confirmation uh, either way. Uh, I, I think it's very unclear. I think most of the intelligence that we have now is coming from Iraqi sources, and uh, there's no confirmation from our side as to what, what, the, uh, uh, what the impact of the strikes were. And those Iraqi sources sometimes can be good, but very often they can be so, pretty sometimes bad. they have their own motives and motivations, yeah. so you, you, can't, you can't always tell. You certainly can't take it to the bank. If, in fact, he were at least injured, how big of a deal would that be? Because you heard Brian Todd report there are a whole bunch of others waiting in the wings that could step up. Well, you've got to remember that the president's strategy here started out degrade and destroy. Degrade, part of degrade is weapons tanks, trucks, all of those kinds of things, but it's also leadership. I think it would be a blow. Baghdadi traces his lineage back to the prophet. He's not only a military leader, but he's a symbolic religious leader. And I think whenever you degrade the leadership of any organization, it's going to have an impact. Now, as your correspondent said, there's a bench and there will be changes, but uh, uh, I think it could be an important step. Because ISIS, you know, you got to remember, is not just a bunch of you know, terrorists, many of the top leaders are, are military guys. They were generals, majors, colonels in Saddam Hussein's military. For whatever reason, they bolted and now joined ISIS. So they're, they're pretty disciplined, pretty experienced. That's right. This is not a ragtag group. This is a serious uh, disciplined military operation. No other way they could have had the success that they've had. But I think it's significant. They really have stalled. Now, you know, this, this business in Anbar, as you mentioned, is critically important because that's the approach to Baghdad. We've stalled them. We and the coalition have stalled them throughout uh, Iraq. But whether they're able to mount an offensive uh, toward Baghdad is really the great unanswered And 80 percent of the Anbar province, uh, and it's not far from Baghdad, the capital, is now controlled by ISIS. And all of a sudden, the Pentagon today, as you heard Barbara Starr report, 50 U.S. troops, they are now there at an air base in the Anbar province. This is a dangerous area. It's a very dangerous area. And that's why the crucial, there are two crucial pieces of this other than our, our air power. And that is whether this is a real coalition and whether we have the support of Arab states in the region, I think we do. That's an important step. But secondly, whether the new government in Baghdad is inclusive and can reach out to the Sunni majority in those regions in northern and western Iraq. If they can't, uh, this is a fool's errand, uh, Wolf. It's not going to happen because it's going to take the retaking those, uh, those Sunni areas, and that's only going to happen if the indigenous population changes their loyalty. The U.S. taxpayers from 2003 until the U.S. pulled out of uh, Iraq at the end of 2011 spent tens of billions of dollars arming, training, equipping the Iraqi military. ISIS comes in, they leave they those weapons, they run away. What makes the U.S. believe that the training, equipping, and arming of the Iraqi military now and the deployment of all these U.S. military, quote, advisors, starting with 200, then 500, then 1,500, now 3,000, not just in Baghdad, not just in Mosul, but now in Anbar. What makes the U.S. believe the outcome is going to be any different this time? I think the, the only basis for it is that we have no other options, that we've got to work with this army and that they have to step forward. And there are units. Remember when the president sent uh, about 1,000 troops over there four or five months ago? That was essentially an intelligence operation to determine the capacity of what was left of the Iraqi army. The other piece of this is, is the Peshmerga, the, the Kurds army, which is uh, holding its own and which is a powerful force. This war cannot be won by air power. No war ever is. It's got to be won on the ground but I think I speak for the Congress and many people in America. They're not going to be American boots on the ground. These have to be Iraqi boots. Well, when you, Americans hear that, and you know this, Senator, there are now going to be 3,000 American troops right. in Iraq. They'll, these are all going to be on the ground, and they're all going to be wearing boots. Uh, and this is a pretty dangerous area. They're going to, be, they're going to need protection. Sure. They're going to go out there, and they're going to be fully armed. And you know what? And I, I hate to think about this, but there are going to be casualties probably sooner rather than later. Is the American public ready for that? 
Well, I, I think it's going to be a problem because I think there has been representations that this was going to be sort of clean and people hear what they want to hear is air power is going to take care of it. It's not going to take care of it. And the real question, as you say, is how much harm's way are these, uh, are these troops in and what is, going to, uh, what is going to be their mission if it is, in fact, train and do intelligence, then it's the, the brunt of the fighting, the door-to-door -door work is going to have to be done by the Iraqi army. And so when, when the critics say this is mission creep and uh, they draw parallels to what the U.S. went through in the 60s in Vietnam, you say... I say that's, that's a valid question. That's why Congress has to debate this and talk about what the authorization is that the president has to wage this war. Well, Congress has been on vacation for the yeah, last few and, weeks. Yeah, and you're right, and we should have done it in September. I'm hoping we're going to do it in the next two months. I heard today that they said, well, maybe it'll happen in January. That's too late. My view is, along with a lot of other members of Congress of both parties, is that this is a responsibility that Congress has to define what our mission is, to define what our exit strategy is, and to limit what the, what the president's authorized to do. Otherwise, we've simply turned over that power to and, the president. And, I think that's wrong. And the fact that the Republicans will be in the majority in the next U.S. Senate, John McCain presumably will be chairman of the Armed Services Committee. He's right. a hawk. There's a whole bunch of other hawks. What impact will that have on the overall war against ISIS in Iraq and Syria? Well, that's the, that's the question, because uh, we can have broader agreement that there should be a new authorization that defines the mission. The question, though, is you're going to have some people, McCain probably and Lindsey Graham and others, who are going to say it should be broadly defined with a lot of authority. Tim Kaine of Virginia and others are going to say, no, it should be more narrowly limited in time and scope. So it's, it's one thing to say we're going to have an authorization. The next hard question is going to be, what does it consist of? I think it's up to the president to step forward and say, this is the authorization that I think I need. And then we will do our constitutional but, duty but, but to, to analyze you know, that Senator, with an answer. The president says he doesn't need any more authorization. Well, he, he says he has it. He changed that over the weekend. It was very interesting. Over the weekend, he made a statement. He's been saying, I don't need it, but I would welcome it. Over the weekend, he said, I want it and I need it. And so I think there's a slight difference in the White House position. We're going to end up, hopefully, with a serious debate about this. That's what we ought to be doing. All right, I want you to stand by. We have more questions, Senator King, including Iran. Iran's role in what's going on in Iraq and Syria. Is this new Iraqi government a wholly owned subsidiary of the Iranian regime? Stand by. Much more coming up right after this.